when you talk about uh, that, you know, that Indian Muslims stayed on in India, those who stayed on in India, pragmatism was a major reason. Right. Many times it was like there was no option. Correct. Right. To go. Um, I had Asaduddin Owesi on the podcast recently and as you know, he's very uh, vocal about his identity as an Indian and as an Indian Muslim. Right. Uh, now, he said this and I quote it. He said, Main is mul- uh, reason I asked him also is because, you know, there, people call him the modern day Jinnah in India. It's a, it's a very rude way of saying it. But then I think Jinnah was say, better. They said that. So, he says that I is mulk mein is liye hu, kyunki mere buzurgo ne ye Jinnah ke two nation theory ko thukraya tha. So, let's go to the first limb of your question, which is on why did I make the statement that they stayed back for reasons of practicality and pragmatism? The good part is, a lot of these people said this themselves. So there's a fantastic interview on YouTube of Maulana Madni, where he's speaking to a Pakistani journalist. And he was asked this very same question. Why didn't everyone move there? Hmm. What was the reason? He said that the you're looking at a population which has stayed in this part of the world for several generations. They had their properties here. And they had their masjids here. And most importantly, he alludes to something which is very crucial. Most people don't even talk about it. At the time of the discussion of Pakistan, even those Muslims who opposed the creation of Pakistan weren't doing so because they wanted to be part of Bharat, but because they believed that this entire land belongs to Islam. And therefore, they said, why are you settling for one third of this when the entire thing was supposed to be Mughalistan? So it's not that we belong to Bharat, but the converse is Bharat belongs to us. Hmm. Rather, Hindustan belongs to us. Because it had been conquered. Conquered. And that reference is constantly there in every speech of Sayyid Ahmed Khan where he said, we have ruled this place for 800 years. That's where this myth comes from, from his speeches. He says this over and over and over again. So when someone tells me, no, no, they stayed back for patriotic reasons, yes, but patriotism towards Bharat, no, patriotic, patriotism towards Mughalistan. That is what they say. Now let's go to the next level. <laughs> Mr. Ravesi presents a very, uh, I'd say, a peculiar picture. Because his party is the legal successor, or at the very least, the ideological successor of the party founded by Rizvi, Ali Rizvi, a lawyer who led the Razakars into the genocide of Hindus during Operation Polo. We should know this as people who come from Bhaginagar and Hyderabad, where we have seen our families and relatives being butchered at the hands of these Razakars. So they would come with serrated knives. You'll find Razakars being mentioned in two different parts of the world, Bangladesh and in Hyderabad. Yeah. Okay. So Razakars, what they would do is that they would tie the male members of the family together and set them alight for the rest of the families to watch. This was the nature of it. The hostage population theory or the critical uh, critical hostage population theory was pressed into service by the Nizam where he used the Hindu population as the bargaining chip with the Indian Union. That is exactly what is captured in the conversation between his Prime Minister and Vallabhai Patel. He said, you know what we'll do here? And to which Mr. Vallabhai Patel says, what do you think we'll be doing here? So therefore, I, I think it's important for people to just unpack what exactly is Mr. Ovesi talking about? What are the antecedents of his party? Where did they take this discussion forward? There is an MIM and then there is an AIMIM. And we are expected to believe that there is absolutely no relationship between the two. Why don't you release the documents, uh, the founding documents of your party and see who's taken charge from whom? Okay, let's take the converse of the patriotism argument. Did Hindus of Pakistan stay back in Pakistan out of patriotism for Pakistan according to you? No. Knowing fully well what preceded the creation of Pakistan? What did they stay back for? Again, pragmatic and practical reasons. Which means they did not know how to escape because the wealthy people managed to escape. The ones who couldn't, they had to stay back. Ovesi's family, like the others, could afford to leave. I'll come to that. Ovesi's family, you should, whenever you listen to his speeches, or I would say operate in compartments where you pay attention to his Urdu speeches and his Jalsas first and then see what he says in his English speeches before in English channels. In Aurangabad, and in old parts of Hyderabad and other places, every time they start talking, they hearken back to the atrocities of Operation Polo. Akbaruddin Ovesi and Asasuddin Ovesi constantly speak of this as if it's a, it's, it's a holocaust that's visited the Muslim community. That's how you speak of the accession of the Hyderabad princely state under the Nizam to the Indian Union. People don't read or let's say watch those speeches. I've seen those speeches. I know Hyderabad Urdu as well as any other person. So I know exactly what they're talking about. So what is being presented to the English audience is the sanitized version. Now, Sri Arun Shori wrote a brilliant piece in his heyday as a journalist around the Ram Janabhumi period, where he spoke of how temples were destroyed and how history was whitewashed. He said, 
I went to the seminary's library in Deoband and other places. The Arabic version openly says we destroyed this temple, this temple, this temple, this temple. He identifies all of that. Arabic to Urdu goes through the first round of distortion where the tone has come down a bit. From Urdu to English, it's gone completely. And then now we are being told that uh, Ghazni came to Somnath to liberate the non-Brahmins from the Brahmins. This is apparently apparently he had to come seventeen times to liberate people mm. and not for the gold, right? Now when it comes to Mr. Ravesi. When he says this, he is abundantly clear in several statements uh, on YouTube. He says, "Dakhan hamara hai." Dakhan is Dakshin, Deccan. That's where it comes from because the Nizam was effectively the sword arm of the Mughal in the south. The two regions that were dear to Aurangzeb were Bengal because he was the subedar of that particular suba, and then Dakhan, which turned out to be the graveyard of the Mughal Empire. Because the Marathas had come up here, the Vijayanagar Empire, all of these people were here. Of course, Vijayanagar is precedes Babur. That's a different mm. issue. But the point is. they speak from a sense of ownership and which is packaged and presented as a sense of patriotism please learn to distinguish both i don't buy this for one bit so he is the same person who rushes to assam in kokrajhar in uh, rather kokrajhar in assam in 2012 because he has to establish kinship with the rohingyas and others or people who were being killed there or who people who were actually killing the others then there are riots in mumbai uh, where the uh, the soldier memorial is destroyed around the particular period by members of the Rizvi Academy or whatever academy that is or Reza Academy he establishes some kind of sympathy with them he immediately opens up camps for all these people what is he talking about i'd like to understand why is it that mr ovc always finds it in him to establish sympathy for the person who's writing so notwithstanding his uh, his let's say his gift of gap to present this as some kind of a sacrifice that they've made that we have not gone to pakistan we have stayed back here and all that his urdu speeches to his home audience and his home territory is very very different i mean those speeches reflect a very different side and i'd say the true side perhaps if you keep looking at all muslims are people who are too poor to leave right. or were avaricious who thought that oh we can have business opportunity so let us stay back right. if you ascribe these motives to all those who stayed back then there right. is no meeting ground then the divisions become more and more do you as, do you agree with that i think there are some fantastic meeting grounds so let me give examples hmm. mr kk mohammed who has uh, reconstructed certain temples in bateshwar and other places in madhya pradesh who is who all, also says that i don't find any conflict between my origin as a muslim and my current belief system abdul kalam are in these examples worth citing during his lifetime mr abdul kalam wasn't exactly seen as a celebrated member of his community because he was making weapons for bharat he was comfortable with the bhagavad gita played the rudraveena or the veena at the very least now these kind of examples don't work because these are the examples where the process of islamization is still not complete there's a fantastic discussion uh, or a debate that happens on the earth litfus platform in 2019 with mr ravesi mr subramanian swami dr subramanian swami and myself and i was supposed to be the moderator there when he was asked the question of what is the position of the rest of the indian muslims with respect to kashmir and bharat relationship see how wishy washy he gets so that means an elected member of the parliament who has been voted to bharat's parliamentary body its legislative body still doesn't wish to commit to the cultural relationship and the civilization relationship between kashmir and bharat he says that's a complicated issue i asked him about ca he doesn't want to acknowledge the fact that in islamic republics hindus get a rough deal at least in this neighborhood he doesn't want to address that i asked him if a specific legislation or an amendment comes out identifying a particular cause why don't you accept that this cause has a direct relationship with the identity of the country because then he would end up having to admit that islamic republics give out a rough deal and a short end of the stick to hindus at the very least in our neighborhood he doesn't want to accept that that is with respect to pakistan and bangladesh he says that i have gone to pakistan i have spoken out against the terror activities of pakistan then why don't you acknowledge that it is the pakistani state which is the islamic state which is actually meeting out this kind of treatment to hindus why doesn't he speak out against that he has all the time in the world to establish kinship with rohingyas he has all the time in the world to establish kinship with muslims across the world including palestinians but not for hindus in pakistan and bangladesh so my point is i find it useless to say that there is a problem with someone else i say the problem lies within and the problem lies within wherein we haven't produced enough committed intransigent hardliners who stick to the position of their culture as much as they are supposed to and each time the hindu society manages to produce them they are in the minority and they are isolated that's exactly the fight between the moderates and the extremists in the congress of that particular period the naramdal and the garamdal that's the distinction